What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the low inspiratory pressure alarm. That's right, last week we talked about the high, this week we're talking about the low, let's dive in. So as I stated, we're talking all about the low inspiratory pressure alarm in this video. Before we do that, head over to respiratorycoach.com. Check out the Respiratory Coach Academy where you can find the TMC and the CSC boot camp to help you pass that TMC and CSC exams on the very first attempt so you can get on with becoming the registered respiratory therapist that you want to be. Now let's take a look at, look at a practice exam question here. A patient is being mechanically ventilated in volume control mode when the low inspiratory pressure alarm begins to sound. The respiratory therapist should assess for which of the following. Now if you watched last week's video where we uh, talked about the high or the peak inspiratory pressure alarm, then you realize that this is the exact same question with one word changed. And instead of saying high or peak inspiratory pressure alarm, this one says low inspiratory pressure alarm. If you haven't seen last week's, be sure and check it out. You can click on this link right here and it will take you to that video. But watch this one first because uh, this one will help you as well understand uh, that one. Now before we talk about the answers, let's talk about what the low inspiratory pressure alarm is and what it tells us about our patients. Now, uh, we look at a pressure waveform here and what we know is that this line here, the high uh, inspiratory pressure alarm, is going to notify us if the pressure during the, the positive pressure breath is elevated up to that pressure alarm setting. Now remember the high inspiratory pressure alarm was unique because it actually terminates the inspiratory phase. That's uh, what makes it unique as an alarm because it also serves as a limit. But you see we also notice where we have another red line now and this red dotted line represents our low inspiratory pressure alarm. Now the interesting thing about this is that you notice that when you have a patient being mechanically ventilated, your peak inspiratory pressure is right there. And we can see we've got a ceiling and a floor. And this is basically where we are, are, are assigning or telling the ventilator, this is where we are. I want you to let me know if we go too high but also let me know if the pressure fails to exceed the low inspiratory pressure alarm. And so your peak inspiratory pressure should fall between your high and your low inspiratory pressure alarms. Now again, million dollar question, where should the low inspiratory pressure alarm be, um, be set? And the answer is the same as what it was in the last video. It depends on each and every one of your patients. If we go to Egan's, uh, this is chapter 46 in the 13th edition. Remember, Egan says this, the purpose of ventilator alarms is to bring events to the attention of the clinician. That's you. The, the purpose of setting these alarms, specifically for this video, the low inspiratory pressure alarm, is to notify you, to, to, to bring uh, uh, a potential problem to your attention. And then he goes on to say the basic goal is to maximize true alarms and minimize false alarms. You see, you don't want this low inspiratory pressure alarm set here. That would, um, that would be too high. And small changes in pressure during volume control ventilation, you may have some fluctuations. So it can't be set too close to your actual peak inspiratory pressure. Some say five centimeters of water pressure below, some say 10 centimeters of water pressure below your actual peak and steady and stable um, peak inspiratory pressure. So, but again, I go back and say it has to make sense for each and every single one of your patients. If you had a, a, a patient with a peak inspiratory pressure of 14 centimeters of water pressure, well, I don't know if I would set my low inspiratory pressure at four centimeters of water pressure. It would probably be set higher than that, closer to uh, say eight or nine centimeters of water pressure, closer to the five. But we see nonetheless. Now the question is, is what would cause our ventilator to be ventilating at pressures like this breath after breath after breath and then suddenly get a breath that does not reach the low inspiratory pressure alarm. You see, this alarm will sound. It will alert you to a potential problem when a breath is delivered that the pressure does not exceed the low inspiratory pressure alarm. So that's, that's actually a key point because you don't ever want to set this low inspiratory pressure above your, 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 your peak inspiratory pressure 
because then it's going to go off all the time. So you want it below your peak inspiratory pressure, but you also want it greater than your PEEP setting because depending on what ventilator you're using, if you have your low inspiratory pressure set down here, well, if this is your PEEP, there's a good chance that alarm is pointless. It's never going to go off because you're always higher than that setting. So you want it between your inspiratory pressure and your baseline, whatever that is set on, and it's going to alert you any time that that pressure is not reached during the inspiratory phase. Now, what would cause that pressure not to be reached? Well, a couple of things. Um, in extreme cases, if you had really high pressures and you had a patient who um, rapidly improved, uh, their compliance got better quickly, which isn't typically something that happens, but that could cause your pressures to decrease. If you had somebody whose compliance or resistance improved, then in volume control, your pressures are going to decrease and that could take your peak inspiratory pressure lower than your low inspiratory pressure alarm. You would have to fix that by just going, oh good, patient's getting better. I need to lower my alarm setting because this is the new baseline for this patient. But most commonly and most likely, if you get this alarm, it's because you have some sort of leak in your circuit or at your airway. There's a leak happening somewhere, and that makes sense. When we think about uh, putting air in your car tires or in a bicycle tire, if there is a nail in your tire, that's going to cause a leak, and that causes your pressure to go down. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to take the nail out and fix the leak. It's the same principle during mechanical ventilation. If you're getting a low inspiratory pressure alarm, you need to assess your patient ventilator uh, interaction for a potential leak. Now, now, this can happen a lot of different places. It can happen at the ventilator, within the circuit, or potentially part of the artificial airway. For patient safety, it's recommended that we start from the in, in, in investigation stage, like I gotta find the leak now, start at your patient, because likely it will be happening at the cuff. This could be due to a ruptured cuff or just a deflated cuff, a cuff that um, um, maybe uh, didn't doesn't have enough air in it and you have a cuff leak. Potentially you had uh, an, a patient intubated with a lot of airway edema. That airway edema is now reduced. Now the airway is larger and now you have a cuff leak. So start there and then work your way back, checking each and every connection from the connection, the circuit to the artificial airway, all of the little adapters within the circuit and then obviously where the uh, ventilator uh, uh, inlet and outlets are to where the circuit connects to those inlets and outlets, okay? Because um, what you're looking for is where's the leak? Now, a lot of times leaks are obvious. If your ventilator comes disconnected uh, at the artificial airway, you're going to hear it. It's going to be very loud. You're going to go, oh, the, the vent's just blowing out here. It's not connected to the artificial airway. You, you don't have to, you don't have to assess the cuff at that point in time. Like reconnect the ventilator, right? If the uh, inspiratory limb comes disconnected from uh, the ventilator outlet, then then reconnect it. You, it. It'll be obvious. It'll be loud. You'll know it. Then that's obvious. But when it's not obvious, remember the game plan is to start at the patient, assessing the integrity of the cuff, and then working your way back to the ventilator. Okay. Now, also, a patient with a chest tube, um, uh, could potentially create a large leak also. So uh, keep that in mind if you uh, have a large pneumothorax with a chest tube uh, inserted and you're getting a low pressure alarm, it may be related to that leak. So use the term leak loosely when you're trying to find where the leak is. And that brings us back and that brings us back to our practice exam question. Again, patient ventilated Low inspiratory pressure alarm begins to sound. Which of the following should you assess for? We've got answer A here is cuff leak. Uh, we know that now we know that that is a potential that will cause a low inspiratory pressure alarm. Bronchospasm. Bronchospasm 
will not cause a low inspiratory pressure alarm, more likely to cause a high inspiratory pressure alarm. What about a pneumothorax? That will cause a decrease in our compliance, which will cause our pressures to increase, not decrease, which would be more likely to cause a high inspiratory pressure than a low inspiratory pressure. And then maybe assess for a circuit disconnect. This would be another potentially correct answer that would be um, a potential option for this question. Now you have to you have to have more data or more details to really know is it a cuff leak or is it a circuit disconnect. Look for the clues in the, the scenario to point to you which one the single best answer is. Now I will say this also, a lot of ventilators with massive uh, loss of pressures will alarm circuit disconnect. So you have that as well. So you just have to look at the details, you have to understand your alarm settings and know how and what it is telling you um, about your patient being mechanically ventilated. That's why you exist as a registered respiratory therapist. And that is the low inspiratory pressure alarm. I'm a respiratory coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. Come find me on Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. And don't forget to visit respiratorycoach.com. I appreciate you so much for watching. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.